Good morning. morning. Welcome to Beautiful Savior. Uh, This afternoon or this morning, we have one more opportunity to have Vicar Wong bring us the gospel. What he's going to do is to take last week's sermon where we talked about the blessing of gathering physical bread and now talk about the blessing of gathering spiritual bread. Everything that you're going to need to worship with us, you will find on the PowerPoint slides behind me. And now if everything is ready, Come, let us worship the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Please rise for the confession of sins. God invites us to come into his presence and worship with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always re- more ready to hear than we are to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour on us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we have the privilege of being fed in two different ways. First of all, our soul is going to be fed through the Word. Later on, it will be fed through the, God, through the sacrament. Our first reading is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19. Uh, in this section of Scripture, we see Elijah at one of the low points in his life. Uh, God comes to him and feeds him physically. Ultimately, though, feeds him spiritually. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. They came to Beersheba in Judah. He left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and There by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Here ends our reading.
our gospel, our, our New Testament reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, beginning at chapter 4. Uh, in this section of scripture, God gives to his people a, a sort of template, the way we should treat others. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Here ends our reading. gospel is recorded in John chapter 6 verses 41 through 51. Here we pick up where we left off in last week's gospel. This portion of scripture will, will also serve as the basis of our sermon message. In honor of the gospel, please stand. At this, the Jews began, the Jews there began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, They will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, last weekend, my cousins had me and Caitlin over to their house for supper. Everything was delicious, but they made us something special that night. Fresh bread. Nothing beats homemade fresh bread, right? You know, the kind that's crisp on the outside, but when you tear it open, it's soft and chewy on the inside. So simple, yet so satisfying. This bread reminded me of the kind of bread that the children of Israel ate in the desert, manna. I mean, apart from the fact that it was a miracle from God, this bread was so simple, yet so satisfying. It provided all the sustenance they needed for their bodies. Jesus has offered to all people, to you and to me, a much better bread, the bread of life, 
the bread from heaven, Jesus. But it's disturbing, isn't it? Not, not the bread of life himself, but the treatment of this bread. From the moment that Jesus announced that he was the bread of life, he became public enemy number one. The Jews grumbled amongst themselves. How can, how can he say that he came down from heaven? This is Jesus, right? Joseph's son, the carpenter's son. He lives over on Nazareth Boulevard, right? He's not from heaven. He can't be. He, he is not equal to God in majesty. He is not the son of God. He is not the bread of life. He can't be. And you've got to wonder how they could be so blind, right? But the fact of the matter is this. It's not that they didn't need this bread. It's that they weren't looking for it. And, and when you think about it, it actually kind of makes sense because the Jews were so attracted to Jesus' divine power. They had just witnessed the, Jesus perform this miraculous act of feeding the 5,000 but, but even this extraordinary act did not satisfy their worldly appetite. We want more, Jesus. Give us another sign. Prove yourself to us. And we begin to see the heart of the issue. Their lack of faith. They overlooked all of the signs that pointed to Jesus' authentic status as the Son of God. Scripture is chocked full of references that point to the coming Christ, his lineage, his birth, all of the, the psalms that talk about him, all of the prophets who tell of him. And although the Jews read the scripture, when they looked at Jesus, they didn't see him as their savior. And it's just as Jesus stated in these verses, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them. While the people were looking for another physical miracle from Jesus, God gave them a much greater miracle, the miracle that they in fact needed, the miracle of faith. You see, the people were stuck, and Jesus was well aware that they were stuck in this deadly pit of unbelief. But the patient Savior did not leave the people. Instead, he gave them a promise. Very truly, I tell you, the one who, ha who believes has eternal life. And here Jesus cannot be mistaken. Jesus often said those words, very truly, I tell you, when he spoke an, an absolutely important truth, a truth that was true all of the time, no matter what. It's kind of like if you and I were to say, you can take it to the bank, right? Or you can bet your bottom dollar on this. It's 100% accurate. Of course, Jesus as the Son of God, as the perfect Son of God, whenever he says something, it's 100% accurate all the time. The one who believes has eternal life. Amen. Yes, this must be so. God's word cannot fail us. With this gracious news, Jesus once again repeats that claim about himself. I am the bread of life. I wonder how, how Jesus would have said those words, what kind of tone of voice he would have used. Did he look at them and smile and say, I am the bread of life, conveying that, that comforting, sweet gospel message? Or did he use a more didactic teaching tone and say, I am the bread of life, contrasting the difference between the physical bread that God provided for their ancestors and the spiritual bread that was for life eternal? Or did, did Jesus lovingly grab them by the shoulder and say, I am the bread of life? I don't know. I suppose each of us can come to our own conclusions. But I do know this, that here Jesus gives the most unmistakable testimony about himself. I am the bread of life. 
that's huge news. Especially, you would think, for those Jews. I mean, no longer did they need to wait for the promised Messiah, the prophet of the Lord. No longer did Jesus stand for any misinformation that was out there about himself. No longer did the disciples or any other believer need to question Jesus' purpose or his authority. The one who was going to deliver them from their sin and bring them safely into heaven had come their personal Savior from sin. The one who has delivered you from your sins and who will bring you safely into heaven has come. Your personal Savior from sin. What's interesting to me in this section is the shift in Jesus' presentation of himself to the people. Here's what I mean. Perhaps you have noticed that in the past previous gospel accounts, whenever someone tried to assert Jesus' authority, he would often remove himself from that situation. For example, when the Jews came to Jesus and they wanted to make him an earthly king, well, he went off to a mountainside by himself. But now, Jesus is ever so clear about who he is the bread from heaven, the bread of life. As the bread of life, Jesus has so many blessings to offer you and to me and to all who have faith. The forgiveness of sins, freedom from guilt, the hope of heaven, joy and peace on earth, and so much more. The blessings are endless for those with faith. But for those without faith, these words meant nothing. The bread of life meant nothing to them. It's like if I were to tell you that there is an awesome, delicious barbecue joint out in the Tennessee boondocks. Why should you care? You don't live there, so that information is useless. It's meaningless to you. In the same way, without faith, the knowledge of the bread of life is meaningless. Your friends, never forget how amazing this gift of grace is, that God has chosen you and persuaded you to believe in him through his word. As the, writer to the, as the hymn writer says, your faith is unasked, unforced, unearned. As we confess in the third article, I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. Your faith is a free and gracious gift from God. The Holy Spirit has planted that miracle of faith in your hearts. And through faith, we cling to the bread of life. Last weekend, Pastor Ehlert preached an exceptional sermon. He encouraged us to gather all of the the blessings in our life. Just as Daily, day after day, God provided manna in the desert for the Israelites, just what they needed. The Lord provided, the Israelites gathered. In the same way, the Holy Spirit provides us with all of the spiritual blessings that we need, we must gather them. Open your Bibles. Come to Bible study and Sunday school. Turn on the the Christian radio or put, put in your Christian music or CD. Explore the Bible app. Do anything you can. Take advantage of those opportunities, those extra devotions on Facebook. God expects us to grow in our faith and to nourish it. Second Peter, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy, these commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Hebrews, let us therefore move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity. Once again, God provides us with the foundation of our faith. That is Jesus. But he commands us to grow our faith. And I like to use the the image of a seed. God plants that seed of faith into our hearts. And through the gospel and through his sacraments, he causes that faith to grow. 
God provides the water and the nutrients, his word and the sacraments, but we must gather them. Who can gather them? Anyone. Jesus repeats this and repeats this and makes that very clear twice in this chapter. Back in verse 37, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Those who go to Christ will realize that he is their merciful savior who will not cast them out. Jesus reinforces that idea in verse 50. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. Who can gather? Anyone. What do we gather? The best bread. The bread of life. This bread never goes stale. It will never perish or spoil. It's so simple, entirely satisfying. May we always gather this bread. Amen. And the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's continue our worship as we speak together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, God from true God, begotten that man, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. You have offered your perfect life on earth to win for us eternal life in heaven. God, our Father, your Son welcomed all who came to him, even the outcasts and the despised. O Holy Spirit, come to us with your comforting word, which alone can drive away all doubts. As you have gathered us to be your children, may we now and always gather the gracious gifts that are found in your word and sacraments. We pray in Jesus' name and join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are You, Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank You for sending Your Son, Jesus Christ, and we remember the great acts of love through which He has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is, the, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. You may be seated. At this time, you may come up to take the Lord's Supper at the uh, direction of the ushers, and during the distribution, we will be singing hymn 311.
please rise. We leave in the joy and strength of the Lord, we read responsively from Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. We are going to again sing uh, hymn number 773. It was introduced two weeks ago. Our vocalist will sing the first refrain and the first verse, and we will all join in for the additional refrains and verses. Good morning once again to all of you. Thank you for worshiping with us here at Beautiful Savior. A few announcements for you. First of all, next Sunday, August 22nd, will be the installation of our next vicar, our fifth vicar, John Jordan. Vicar Jordan will be at all three services next weekend. You can meet him at a welcoming reception being held after each service. And next we have an announcement from Dr. Pfeiffer.
Thank you, Vicar. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another beautiful morning, and you'll hear more about the church picnic in just a few moments. Uh, we're at that time, and Pastor's going to say a few words in a moment, we're at that time where, once again, we're saying goodbye to another vicar. They just keep coming and going. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but uh, we have a little gift for you this morning, vicar. It's uh, both um, a little memento of your time here with us in Town. <laughs> Vikings fan, Vikings fan, yeah. Pastor Wong, you may want to close your eyes at this. So. <laughs> but it's not only a memento of your time here with us, but it's also a practical gift of something that we understand you're going to be needing this next year. So if you'd like to open it, and we'll put a picture up for everybody to see, and so you can explain it to us, please. be a little small for me, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Caitlin and I are happy to announce that we are expecting uh, baby Wong is due in February, February 17th. So we're very excited about that. Mike gave this to me yesterday as well, and I just can't help but think since I'm such a generous person, I'm gonna donate it to Goodwill or something like that. <laughs> all right, I would also like to say just a few parting words with you all. Dear friends in Christ, maybe you notice that I am addressing you now the same way that I would address you before every sermon. Dear friends in Christ, maybe I should have changed that to dear brothers and sisters in Christ, because you have become much more like a family to me. I've truly enjoyed getting to know you all. You've been so kind, caring, and supportive to me and my wife this whole year. I appreciate all the friendships that we have made and will remember you in my thoughts and prayers. As I leave here and continue my training to be a pastor, I will always be thankful for my time here at Beautiful Savior in Green Bay. I pray that you have learned more about your Savior through my preaching and that you continue to grow in your faith by reading his word. Caitlin and I came here as a family of two, and we're happy to announce that we'll be leaving here as a family of three. And no, we aren't getting a dog. <laughs> there, there'll be one more Wong in February, and there's nothing Wong with that. <laughs> Pastor? <laughs> uh, usually about uh, July, and I'm going to go to an Old Testament Bible, Bible story. Um, remember when uh, Elijah was getting ready to be taken away, and Elisha, every, you know what, I'm gonna skip that story because I'm gonna get choked up. I heard you got choked up yesterday. Is mm -hmm. that true? Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you spend a whole year with somebody, and you see somebody come in, and, and you know, the, the, the first thoughts that, you know, the, the fear that you see in somebody's eyes, you know, am I going to be capable of this? And, and of course, I always know that they're going to be capable because I trust uh, uh, MLC and the seminary. They wouldn't have encouraged anybody to go this far uh, and to continue on uh, towards their vicar year if there were some serious concerns. And then I also know that somewhere during the year, there's going to be that, that, that grasp of, of, you know what, I, I can do this. And then the, the great thing is that somewhere, and, and I don't know when it happens, you know, Nathan, maybe it was around April, May with us, is that instead of me, you know, teaching you and having to sit down and say, hey, why don't we think about it this way, or, or why don't we think about it that way, that it becomes that joint ministry. And I think... That is both the privilege of serving for you and then also the privilege of serving with you. So, 
that's my announcement. And I think last night I was going, you got to write this down. And then, then you'll just sail through it. And then I decided, no, nah, I would just speak from the heart. But it was a privilege again uh, to work with you and then also to get to know Caitlin. And I, I look forward to, uh, to following you next year as you go back to the seminary. Pray for you and that, that baby. I also want to thank Caitlin, both your parents uh, and then Nathan, your parents, for, for your dad and mom sharing their daughter and then also that you would share your son with us. So... I am done. <laughs> apparently, I'm the, apparently, I'm the only one who doesn't get choked up this morning. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, we hope you'll be able to join us for our church picnic right after this, an opportunity to, to thank and say goodbye to uh, Nathan and Caitlin as well. Just a real quick announcement about how it'll work, and then pastor's going to have a lunch prayer with us. Uh, we'll leave by the center aisle if you are staying. Uh, please don't gang up all at one time. Uh, the serving line will go right past the kitchen counter where you can pick up your fish if you so wish to do so. So, and then there are tables along the back wall with all the salads and desserts and all that other wonderful stuff that so many people brought for us today. Uh, once we are in the other room, there's seating for about 50 people in the fellowship hall, and we have lots of seating in the adjacent rooms as well. So there'll be plenty of room for everybody to spread out. And once we are in there, then uh, hopefully we'll take just a moment to uh, give some appreciation to Cindy and to uh, Dean and Julie and their families for the delicious meal they put together for us this morning. So thank you for joining us. And then Pastor, please. Why don't we fold our heads in prayer. Uh, dear Father in heaven, thank you for, for sharing uh, both Nathan and Caitlin with us this past year. They have been a blessing to us. I, I trust that we have been a blessing to them. Uh, Lord, as we bid them goodbye from our midst now, help us to see that what we are doing is, is sharing uh, another person to be able to uh, go out and proclaim that gospel, whether it is Caitlin in a classroom or Nathan in a pulpit. Uh, Lord, you have fed us with spiritual food once again, and now you're going to feed us with that physical food. So we join together in praying. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Oh, thanks unto the Lord, for his good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. All right. Those are the announcements. I invite all of you to come back and uh, grab some fish. Uh, all the fish was caught uh, locally, so it is locally caught by the dolmen. So we appreciate their work and then also picking it up. You may go at your leisure. Thank you. <laughs>